call? There's nothing more determined than poultry with a plan. This is the exciting story of the great eggscape that has inspired chickens everywhere. I thought we tried going under. Ah, over. Now, humans sympathetic to the feathered fight for freedom have brought the tale of these plucky young heroes to the silver screen. We'll either die free chickens or die trying. Are those the only choices? Dare to dream. Let her go! And get ready to fly. Yes, yes, yes! As DreamWorks Pictures presents... Whoa. The Hatching of Chicken Run. Security is tight at Tweedy's farm. High fences, midnight patrols, the perfect challenge for a few good hen. No chicken escapes from Tweedy's farm! It's a story of chickens fighting for their independence from a chicken yard, almost like a Second World War sort of escape movie, like chickens caught in a stalag. They're organized, I know it. That ginger one, I reckon she's their leader. Mr. Tweedy, uh -oh. it's chickens, you dolt. They don't plot, they don't scheme, and they are not organized. I know our last escape attempt was a bit of a fiasco. Ginger sort of sits on the top of her hut every evening and looks out over the fields beyond and sees a free world with green grass and trees and birds and she just wants to escape. You know what the problem is? The fences aren't just round the farm. They're up here, in your heads. Rocky the rooster, an escaped uh, rooster from the circus who was fired out of a cannon. The chickens believe he can fly. Hi, how are you? Mr. Rhodes, is this you? <laughs> Who wants to know? A group of rather desperate chickens. He goes along with their mistaken assumption because he's selfish and he's trying to get other things out of it. I mean, the only rooster in a house full of British hens. I mean, these are pretty sweet chicks, so he's, he's glad to be there. Which bunk is mine? The idea for Chicken Run was hatched by directors Peter Lord and Nick Park, who don't resemble chickens in the slightest. To understand how this quiet duo reached the top of animation's pecking order, we must go back to the beginning. Well, maybe not that far back. This is a scene from Adam, directed by Peter Lord. He and producer David Sproxton began experimenting with animation as teenagers and sold their first film in the 1970s. It featured an unlikely superhero named Artman, after whom they named their company. Artman later produced Morph, a popular BBC children's program which in part inspired a young Nick Park to pursue animation on his own. These early efforts led him to film school where he met the Artman team. Park showed them unfinished scenes of a cheese-loving inventor and his dog who go to the moon on holiday. And of course, they immediately saw this was an extraordinary talent. So they helped Nick finish his first movie. And in a way, Nick became the third leg of the Ardman Enterprise. A Grand Day Out introduced Wallace and Gromit to the world and was the first Ardman film ever nominated for an Academy Award. Let's have a nice hot cup of tea. Hmm? Sadly, it would lose to the second Ardman film ever nominated for an Academy Award, Creature Comforts, also directed by Nick Park. And uh, we don't like potatoes, we like meat. But even as Ardman continued to take clay animation to new heights with their innovative shorts and TV campaigns, one challenge remained. Well, people have approached us a long time ago, yeah. right? probably since the first Oscar, uh, you know, we were approached to do a feature film. It was really because of the amazing perseverance of Jeffrey Katzenberg and, and his total and unequivocal commitment and passion for these guys and, and this project. Do we have a deal? You know, I think we're a very different animal. You know, we make a very different kind of film here, and, and that's the good thing. I mean, Jeffrey and DreamWorks and seem to respect our individuality here. The chicken Run is a chance to really sort of blow out, in the best sense, the size and, and yet to embrace the incredible detail and characters that are uniquely ordinary. Mrs. Tweedy! For almost three years, flocks of artists ran around like chickens with their heads cut off, scrambling to draw storyboards, build sets, and finalize character designs that would eventually allow the animators to create poultry in motion. Ooh, my life 
flashed before my eyes. It was really boring. Voices have always been very important to us, and our, and our kind of filmmaking, you know, of our acting, of the animation of the character, you know, is inspired by and based purely on the actual voice and all the different little tricks and turns that the voice does. I'll teach you to make a fool out of me. Tony Haygarth plays Mr. Tweedy, the most hand-packed farmer in all of Yorkshire. No chicken escapes from Tweedy's farm! Academy Award-nominated actress Miranda Richardson plays Mrs. Tweedy, the meanest plucker chickens have ever known. She rules with a rod of iron and she just wants to make money. She's sort of, you know, thin and crabbed and pinched and she's got a sort of vision that life can be different somehow. This will take Tweedy's farm out of the Dark Ages and into full-scale automated production. Oh. We've got to get out of here. To play our hero of the whole movie, Ginger, we have Julia Sawala, who's probably best known from Absolutely Fabulous, playing Safi. I push them because I care. Something I wouldn't expect a lone free ranger to know anything about. Hey, this is the way you show it. I hope you never care about me. I can assure you I never will. Good! Fine! Opposite Julia, the dashing male hero, Rocky, played by Mel Gibson. And uh, it seems a part more or less made for him. He gets to be the ultimate charming rogue. I thought you were going to teach us how to fly. Hey, do I tell you how to lay eggs? Relax. Completing the dirty half dozen are Ben Whitrow as Fowler, retired mascot to the Royal Air Force. Quiet, I say! Champion egg layer Bunty, played by Shakespeare in Love's Imelda Staunton. Finally, we get to see a real professional in action. Babs, a chicken with more nit than wit, played by Little Voice's Golden Globe nominee, Jane Horrocks. I don't want to be a pie. Oh, no. I don't like gravy. And Mac, the science whiz, played by Lynn Ferguson. This is us, right? We get in like this, wind and up, and let her go. Oh. 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 It's really weird when you hear your voice coming out of a chicken. Do you know, like, if you watch that and I go, that chicken's got my voice. What happened to my wing? And spring the interior tendon connecting your radius to your humerus. I gave her a wee bit of a tweak, Jimmy, and wrapped her up. Was that English? When you start recording, you really got nothing to go on. I mean, you have no image to go on. Or, uh, so they have to uh, verbally explain things to you. Know, kind of more visual. The, the machine is an enormous machine. It's kind of the, the death star of chickendom. Look at the size of that. And um, Ginger's been hung by her feet by the shackles. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tweedy have left you there. They've turned the machine on. Chickens go in. Pie has come out. And you're, you're just thinking, oh, where's Rocky? Rocky! I'm coming! Hurry! Uh, I'm getting there. Uh, with you in a minute! It's a little bit of a leap to make, and you're kind of just a little bit lost, but as, as uh, time goes by, you sort of narrow down. I'll be down before you can say, mixed vegetables, I'll be right down. Now that I've actually seen some footage, it's, it's tremendously helpful. I'll be down before you can say, mixed vegetables. I'll be down before you can say, mixed vegetables. Ah! Ah! Underneath their charming exteriors are chickenized versions of the Terminator, dying to travel back in time and find out which actually came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> Funny. Over here, the rule is always tell the truth. Armatures basically consist of two parts. One part is the is the steel skeleton, which is um, like the legs and like this, this metal section here. And the other part is the coring around it. And the function of the, the steel skeleton is to actually allow all of the parts to move and to be held in position when they've been moved. Yeah, that feels all right. Stop motion animation is the process of placing a model in front of a camera and taking a picture, then moving that model and taking another picture. Repeating the process 24 times yields one full second of animation. But Ardman goes many steps further. Mm -hmm. State-of-the-art cinematography and production design allow the filmmakers to shoot animation as if it were live action, bringing the viewer fully into the miniaturized realm. Each of the 110,000 images that comprise Chicken Run is a handcrafted work of art made by men and women who like to play with dolls for a living. To me, it looks really glossy, and the sets and the lighting 
and everything is incredible. I mean, the mood on the whole thing, you know, it's very atmospheric. And when you realize how it's done, it's just, it's mind-blowing, you know, bit by bit. And the pig says to the horse, hey, fella, what a long face! <laughs> if you have a, a frame full of characters, we have ten characters, every character has its body, its head, its neck, an arm, each arm has a hand and fingers, and if it's a full shot, you'll have legs and toes, and uh, even down to the face, you have a mouth and your nose and eye. Everything has to be moved by the animator. OK, we're rolling. When you're ready, Jane. Mm, that might work. Each line of dialogue is broken down into individual syllables, and plasticine mouths are created for each character to represent the eclectic sounds of their performance. Mm, that might work. Now, one of the advantages of plasticine is that it's all still movable. We're constantly making sure that the way we act out is then translated down into the plasticine. Sleep tight, Angel Face. The rock's on the case. We quite often rehearse on video with ourselves, and it's so much easier and more straightforward to get in front of a video camera and practice it and see how it works. Oh, that's it. I present you with this medal for bravery. And I salute you. We always have to... Um... Rehearse with the director, you know, we, we'll actually act out the scene in front of us, so I usually stick these on and do <laughs> 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 There you go. Try one. All right. Go for... Say Scotland. Scotland! <laughs> <laughs> Scotland! What really distinguishes Ardman's work, not so much the dialogue or the action, but the expressions. And the eyebrow that goes up, the eyes that have that quizzical look or the frown and if someone who does it has to be a real artist to pull it off. We had probably five or six months of rehearsals beforehand to try and get the characters working, get people used to them because you've got to convince the audience that this lump of plasticine they're watching is actually feeling these emotions. Oh face the facts ducks, the chances of us getting out of here are a million to one. Then there's still a chance. Mm. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was brilliant. Yeah, that Look was... out of her eyes. <laughs> Excellent. That's the bit she's just trying to salvage the last bit of pride she has, really. Oh. I love the scene with Rocky and Ginger on the rooftop. You know, that hill is looking closer tonight than it ever has before. That little small moment, you know, I think is the heart and soul of the movie. It's the turning point. After years of hard work, the finished film finally began to take flight. In the quite likely event of an emergency, put your head between your knees and kiss your bum goodbye. It took over 4,000 pounds of plasticine and 10,000 gallons of tea for these artists and performers to bring Check and Run to life. On average, each artist managed to complete two and a half seconds of animation each day. There are over 110,000 separate shots in this movie. Think about it. It's over 110,000 separate shots. If you appreciate the complexity, you are overwhelmed by the achievement. And I think that I'd like to see people come away with an amazing sense of wonder. What I take away from it is, is a sense of satisfaction that art has been created, that there's something really quite remarkable here. Now uh, see, uh, I, I don't recall authorizing a hot pub. Oh, shut up and dance. Oh. A good scene with all the the great efforts of the animators and the model makers and so on. When all the parts come together, it's so much greater than the sum of the parts. That's, that's the lovely thing about filmmaking. Just go with the flow, gals! Let it go! I find as a filmmaker, when you get that buzz, you just know what you're doing is going to be good. You know? and, and, and everyone who's working on it is, is very much giving us those feelings at the moment. And they seem to understand, you know, they can make that stuff live, which I find, you know, the real gift. 